Hey guys, Fouad here from BeatTweaks.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take sidechaining in Ableton Live to a whole nother level. So I'm sure you all know that in Ableton Live, for you to set up sidechaining, you would drop a compressor on each track that you want to sidechain, and then use something like a kick drum or some kind of sample to trigger the compressor that's going to do the sidechaining. Now that's fine, but the problem with that is that you have to put a compressor on every single track. And that's just a pain in the ass and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to show you a much better way to set up side chaining, and it's going to save you a lot of CPU power and a lot of time and it just takes a few steps. So there's a couple of things we need to do. First, we need to set up two new channels. The first channel is going to be, or the first track is going to be an audio track. And let's rename this audio track to sidechain compressor. And I'm just going to put it on top to keep things organized. And I'm going to change its color to something different. Uh, that's fine. So this is an audio channel, an audio track, and this is where we're going to put our compressor. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to use one single compressor to sidechain anything that we want to sidechain. All right. So this is the first step that you have to do. Put an audio track and make sure that it is set to receive audio. So click this in button here. And it's not going to change color now because we don't have anything uh, sent to it yet. All right, so that's step number one. Step number two is we're going to set up another track. This time it's going to be a MIDI track. And we're going to rename this to Side Chain Trigger. And let's make it the same color. Basically, this track is going to act like the kick drum that you normally would use to trigger the compressor. All right. And since it's going to be used as the trigger, so it's going to be used like the kick drum, I'm going to copy over the MIDI tracks from the kick drum in my track. I'm just going to copy them over to the sidechain trigger channel. All right. And let's make these the same color. So now instead of using the kick drum, we're going to be using the sidechain trigger channel, and that's just going to give us more control over the side chaining. Okay, now that we have our two channels set up, the first thing we have to do is choose a sample to be our trigger. Now you would normally use a kick drum. I actually like to use something like a closed hat, something that's very short and snappy. And the reason I like to do that is because it gives me a lot more control over the sound of the pumping. So it gives me more control on the release of the side chain and it gives you a cleaner result. So just open up your samples and choose any short snappy sound. I'm going to use a closed hat in this case. So that's fine. And I'm just going to drop it onto the side chain trigger channel. And I'm going to turn the volume on the sidechain trigger channel all the way down to minus infinity. So I don't want to hear it. The only role this channel has is to feed the compressor on the sidechain compressor track. All right. So that is the setup for the sidechain trigger. We can just minimize it. And now we're going to come over here to the sidechain compressor track. And what you would do here is you would drop a compressor. All right. So this is the compressor and you would enable the side chaining option. Click on side chain to enable it. And then the audio from will be from the side chain trigger. All right. And now all you have to do is basically send whatever track, whatever instrument you want side chained you would just send it to this sidechain compressor track. All right, so we have the base channel here. We can send it to the sidechain compressor. Uh, let's say we want to sidechain the main vocals as well. We can send those to the sidechain compressor. You can even send entire groups. So I have all the synths here grouped. I can send the entire group to the sidechain compressor as well. All right, and now all you have to do is literally as you would normally do with a sidechain compressor is just tweak the settings. So let me play a sample of the track just so we get a feel for what we're working with. 
And I'm actually going to turn the sidechain compressor off here for a second so you can hear how it sounds without anything. So you can definitely hear that it does need some sidechain compression. The bass needs to be ducked away from the kick drum a little bit. And the entire song can use some grooving, some pumping. All right, so now if I turn the sidechain compressor on, we can now pump and sidechain whatever channels we sent into it. Baby. All right, so that is really cool. So you can set up the compressor however you want. Now I'm gonna show you something even better than using just a regular compressor. And this is where you can take things really, really to another level in terms of side chaining and in terms of control that you have over the side chaining settings. So I've come up with a multi-band side chain compressor rack for Ableton Live and what it allows you to do is to sidechain different frequency bands independently of each other. And that is really powerful because that means you can sidechain the low frequencies differently than you do the mids and the highs. So let's say that you really want the bass and the low frequencies, you wanna sidechain them hard to get them out of the way of the kick, but you wanna be more gentle with the mids and the top end, you can do that with this multi-band sidechain compressor rack. So I'm going to go here to the audio effects rack and I'm going to delete. Actually, I won't delete this compressor. So just so we can compare, I'll keep it there. And then I'll just come up here and drop the multi-band sidechain compressor rack. All right. And I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up. We're just going to go through the different controls really quickly. So we have a bunch of macros here. The first one is the low mid crossover. And what that means is this is the threshold for the low frequency band. So that means if I set this at 138 Hertz, that our low frequency band will be everything up to 138 Hertz. Next, we have the mid high crossover. So let's say I set this at three kilohertz or 3000 Hertz. That means that everything above three kilohertz is our high frequency band and everything in between 138 and three kilohertz is our mid range band. All right, next we have the threshold and this controls the threshold literally, just like in this compressor. This threshold macro is basically uh, this slider here. And then we have the ratio for the low frequency band. And down here we have the ratio for the mids and the highs combined, right? So this is, uh, these macros here are controlling the ratio of the compressor. And then here we have the release for the lows, the release for the mids, and the release for the highs. So you can see you have a lot of control here over what you can do with the side chaining. All right, and now to set this up really quickly, you can see here that we have three different chains, high, mid, and low. And all you have to do to set this up is open each one up, and then you have to set the side chain input to the side chain trigger. So we're gonna do the same for the mids, select side chain trigger, same thing for the highs. All right, and now you are all set up with the same setup that we did with the two channels. Now all you have to do is tweak these macros. 
And the really, really awesome thing about this is that you can solo each frequency band so you can listen to how it sounds. You can listen to your sidechain settings for each frequency band, all right? And to do this with more control, I'm gonna turn off all the sends that I have going on because if you solo the bands, you'll still be able to hear the reverb and the delays and all the stuff that I have on here. And that's just gonna distract us from honing in on the sound that we're going for. All right, so we can start with the lows and tweak these settings to get, to get some kind of pumping going on uh, that sounds good to our ears. So if I solo the sidechain compressor channel, you will be able to hear all the instruments that we sent into it, all right? Because this is set to receive audio, and if you solo it, it'll play whatever is being sent into it. All right, so that is cool. Let's go to a section in the song where the kick and the drums are playing. Uh, I have a cool vocoder thing going on here, so maybe we can play that section. And we'll also sidechain the vocoder as well, why not? Let's send it to the sidechain compressor. Let's go back to our sidechain compressor track and let's solo the lows and tweak the settings. So you can see I've tweaked these settings for the low frequencies and now we can do the same thing for the mids except this time we can use different release and ratio settings as well and we can set the mid high crossover point. We can do the same for the highs. All right, so you can see I've set different release settings for the highs, the mids, and the lows. The ratio for the lows, I set really, really uh, strong. So I set it infinity to one, so it's really clamping down on the lows and I was a lot more gentle with the mids and the highs. So now if I unsolo the highs and we listen to everything together and let's unsolo the sidechain compressor track so we can hear everything with the drums and the kick. So you can see and you can hear that this thing is really, really powerful. It gives you so much control over the sound of your side chaining and you can get really creative with it and come up with a whole bunch of different grooves and uh, pumping styles. All right, so there you have it. That is side chaining in Ableton Live taken to a whole nother level. If you want to get this multiband side chain compressor that I've taken you through here, you can get it for just $1.99 if you click on the link in the description. All right, so have fun with it, guys, and happy producing.